everyone welcome back to another video i'm sorry i've been a bit quiet it's been a little bit rough going recently and i've been quite poorly but i'm finally well enough to get some voiceovering done and um it's not like i haven't been crafting because i have and i've been making lots and lots and lots of backgrounds using the march release from picket fan studios uh you can see here i'm uh, i'm going through quite a few here and this one I had a little bit of a mishap uh, with some uh, foil and the uh, Mermaid Scales stencil. On this one uh, and that one too, I have used a deco foil uh, with the, the deco foil transfer gel duo. Uh, obviously, one worked a little bit better than the other one. And uh, on these blue ones, I've used a fancy flourishes stencil. And uh, the blue ink is from uh, Catherine Pooler. It's suede shoes and juniper mist. And the glimmer is moonstone gold. No, not gold. Glimmer paste from uh, Tonic Studios. This one is probably my favorite. It is the mermaid scale stencil with distressed oxides and um, moonstone glimmer paste. This one is a complete ink blended background with distressed oxides and the flourish circle stencil. On this one, I've used the same stencil again with the glimmer paste, but over a background that I've done with Lawn Fawn cardstock. These ones, uh, the next few ones, are done with the paper glazes from Picket Fence Studios. This one has got a succulent green and ocean poppy, and the other one is agapanth purple, peony pink, cornflower blue, and daffodil yellow. On this one here, I have used the mermaid stencil over a uh, ink blended one to kind of give her a little bit of shimmery stencils um, look scales almost on this one I used uh, on these two I've just used the paper glazes in different shades to uh, book different colors to just kind of see what they um, would turn out like now I have uh, actually filmed some of the ink blending and I have used uh, two backgrounds and what I've done is I've gone heavy on one and then I've used the leftover ink on another panel and I've done this with several different shades and colors but for these cards today I'm going to be using these sort of rainbowy backgrounds and it is the mermaid scales stencils that is going to be the star of the show today I'm going to be doing uh, one with moonstone glimmer paste and this is this one here and you can see I'm nearly out and this stuff is completely sold out everywhere. I am <laughs> desperate to get some more. I am signed up on so many sites with the back in stock notification. So uh, when you see it, don't hesitate, just buy it. Because this stuff is fantastic. It just leaves the most incredible shimmer. Ah, <sighs> look at that. Ooh, pretty. All right, I sped up the actual spreading out uh, of the video part, but we are going to have a little look at the unveiling because that is the best part of all stenciling. <sighs> and while that one is uh, drying off, I'm going to be doing another one and I'm going to be using this snow drop white paper glaze from Picket Fan Studios. And I'm not going to clean off the stencil in between to kind of drag in some of those glimmery bits into the paper glaze. Of course, if you want a super smooth finish, clean off your stencil before you put the paper glaze on. And again, I'm going in quite heavy here with a lot of the paste. And um, this stuff is, is just it's really beautiful. It dries super shimmery and lovely. And just look at that. Isn't that pretty? Uh, don't forget to clean off your stencils very, very fast after you use paper glaze because it does dry very quickly. Uh, I decided not to actually use the paper glaze background, but I am going to be using the two uh, Distress Oxide with um, Glimmer Paste on them instead. So for these two, ooh, let's just take a moment to uh, admire again because, oh, yeah. 
reason. I must admit, I, I know it's a bit braggy, but I love how they turned out. Absolutely love. Okay, so sentiment wise, uh, I didn't want to cover up too much. Uh, so I picked out the I Freaking Love You stamp set from Picket Fun Studios. And also this one uh, is called Live Happy. And both of these are going to be heat embossed onto vellum so that they can, you know, just brighten up the card, but without actually covering up too much of the background, because the background is kind of the star of the show, I think. So I'm uh, using my anti-static tool all over my vellum and I'm trying to touch that as little as possible. And then just placing that into my Misty and with some wow embossing. And uh, well, this is the pad, obviously. And uh, the embossing powder is so metallic gold rich. And this one is a regular. I think it does come in super fine as well if you have like really, really fine uh, print and details. But um, don't quote me on that. Right, so quickly put that away and get out my magic sheet of paper. And a generous sprinkling later. We are all ready to go with the heat gun. And there we go, metallic gold rich, regular. If heat embossing wasn't so magical, it would be so fun if you could just keep it like that, you know, with like the texture of, I guess, sand. That would be good. But it does look so much better once it's heat embossed. And with uh, when I heat emboss with vellum, I always, always, always use my little cork board. I do find that it warps a lot less when I do this, even when I go over the vellum quite a lot with my heat gun. And that came out just perfect. And on the back of this, I am using a little bit of, um, this one is actually vellum adhesive, but the actual like dispenser thing is, it's so freaking annoying. I really, I'm not a fan, but, I don't have anything else at the moment that will work as a vellum adhesive, so it's just gonna have to do. Plus, you know, I don't wanna throw it away because that will be wasteful. Right, so I decided to use this one onto my more vivid background, and we're just gonna place that hopefully straight onto the card and press down over the actual writing so that the vellum adhesive will stick to the glimmer paste. <sighs> That is a very good saying, isn't it? For the next one, uh, I decided to use, uh, again, vellum and a gold embossing, because why not? It's just, it's like a classic winning combination. So here we go again with the anti-static tool. This one is actually, it's a kind of a mix between the bag and the one that comes in like a little plastic um, tub thing. Because I I do really like the powder in that, but I don't particularly like the dispenser because I think it's just a little bit like you just you you kind of there shaking you know forever you know and not getting everything covered. But the bag I do find that you you get such a good coverage. So I tip out a little bit of the powder from there into my little orange uh, box, and then I use the little bag to get a good solid coverage, and it works every time. I swear by this trick. Right, and there we go. You are freaking fabulous. I mean, I think that works for all of our friends, right? I mean, the good ones, the ones that we want to send handmade cards to anyway. Ah, the magic of heat embossing. It never gets old, does it? And do you see what I mean with the warping? It's, I mean, I had that heat gun on that for a long time. Well, not a long time, but you know, as long as it took us to melt that. But there was no warping. Cool, huh? So out comes the dreaded little vellum adhesive thing. And you'll see me fiddling around with this uh, quite a lot. And there was there was perhaps a little bit of swearing going on as well because it does drive me kind of crazy. And then we just put that on to our card and flip it over. Flip in the sides and then the whole shebang is going to be added onto a card base. And then that is pretty much it done. Oh, do make sure that those uh, folded edges of the vellum are sharp and that you glue them down really, really well. 
and then add lots of adhesive onto your background before you add it to the card. Make sure they sticks down really, really well. Ain't nobody got time for those loose and flappy backgrounds, eh? Right, then with that, the card, uh, or the cards even, are all done. And uh, we're just gonna have a couple of little close up looks at those and uh, that's it, all done for today. Or this one anyway. Now I'll probably be back sooner rather than later with more stuff because um, there's not a whole lot of stuff. Well, I guess I could clean, but eh, who's gonna do that when you can craft, right? So I will link most of these things uh, down below. And uh, unfortunately the glimmer paste will be out of stock in most places, but just sign up for those back in stock notifications if you wanna grab it and you're gonna wanna. And thank you so much for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed this video and all my crafty shenanigans. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks for today. Bye.